Hello everyone, Chris here with another Free Marketeers weekly news roundup for you on the 9th of July 2021. We'll kick right off with, of course, the biggest news of the last two weeks around former President Jacob Zuma. He has handed himself into the police to begin serving a 15-month jail sentence for contempt of court. He was admitted to Escort Correctional Center in his home province of KwaZulu-Natal on Wednesday. Police warned they were prepared to arrest him if he did not hand himself in by midnight. He is 79 years old and he was handed the jail term last week after he failed to attend a corruption inquiry at the Zondo Commission. So this 15 month sentence doesn't have anything to do with other charges against him around the arms deal, around state capture and the Guptas. This is simply for being in contempt of, of the Zondo Commission. Our next item, Eswatini has experienced four days of rioting, looting, destruction of property, and an unconfirmed number of deaths at the hands of the army. Industrial buildings have been destroyed, retail food outlets looted and burned, and delivery trucks hijacked and burned. One of the triggers was the mysterious death of a law student for which the police are accused of culpability. This has, sent, this has been seen as yet another example of heavy-handed policing. Dissatisfaction about spending by the royal family, which hitherto has only obliquely been commented on, is bubbling to the surface. And the major irritation has been internet connectivity. The authorities were rationing the time that the internet was available and on top of that were apparently censoring the use of social media. Our next item, Dubai-based DP World has tabled an all-cash 12.7 billion rand buyout offer for JSE-listed logistics giant Imperial. DP World is one of the world's largest operators of marine ports, inland cargo terminals, and logistics centers. According to a quote from Wayne Curry of FNB Wealth and Investments, foreign, investments are in foreign investors are interested in South African companies because they are cheap, they have a lot of upsides when it comes to their future profits, even though the economy doesn't look good for now, end quote. The sell-off in JSE shares since the start of the pandemic has been far and wide. Before their biotransactions were announced to investors, the share prices of both Imperial and Distel were still recovering to pre-COVID levels. Um, some news on South Africa's schools. Half a million children in South Africa dropped out of school and younger grades lost close to a full year of learning over the last year. This is according to the National Income Dynamics Study, Coronavirus Rapid Mobile Survey. While a re relatively high number of school children drop out before completing grade 12, in a normal year about 230,000, the survey found that between 650,000 and 700, 750,000 7 to 17 year olds were not in school, which is three times the normal dropout rate. The report also says that learner dropout rates are now at the highest they've been in 20 years. Reciprocally, school attendance is at the lowest level it has been in 20 years. Some news on PRASA, the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa. This is a, from a new report from Ama Bungane. Desperate to halt the theft and vandalism of billions of rands in railway infrastructure, the new board of PRASA conceived an ambitious plan. 5,000 volunteers would be hired as patrollers, supervised by ANC military veterans, at a cost of about 200 million rand. Transport Minister Fikile Mbalula himself proudly rolled out the scheme in March under the name People's Responsibility to Protect Project. A month later, further recruitment for the project was put on hold. Newly appointed Group CEO Zolani Matthews hit the brakes on its implementation days after his arrival. The problems that the Amabungane report identified include questions over how the plan was rushed through during the December holiday season, Opposition from process security experts who considered the project unworkable. Questions from the finance department of unrealistic budget allocations. Lack of compliance with national standards for security personnel. And the removal of the project's national director following complaints about its management. The project's future is now under internal audit review to ensure, quote, that all requirements are met before we can continue with the rollout, end quote. According to answers written, according to written answers that PRASA provided to Ama Bungani. The project appears to be just the latest in a series of missteps since Mbalula took over ministerial responsibility for PRASA, vowing to fix the broken, the broken organization. And that's a wrap for the news for this week. Um, of course, keep an eye out for Sunday, the 11th of July. That is when South Africa's current lockdown level four should expire. But there are some reports that the lockdown will be extended with some of the more strict um, regulations in place, perhaps they will they will allow 
travel into and out of Gauteng for leisure purposes, but something like the alcohol ban could in all probability continue, unfortunately. I hope you've all found this episode enjoyable and useful. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please also like this video and share it on your respective social media platforms. I hope all of you have a good weekend and a good week going forward next week. Talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye.